Hello and welcome back and of course I'm going to continue talking about the DS1019 Plus. I want to talk today about USB backups. Now a number of you have probably just heard me say that or read it in the title and thought what? I've just bought a NAS, it's a backup. And in many regards a NAS is a backup but it is by no means the perfect backup. Namely because so many of you out there, particularly first time NAS buyers, have purchased your NAS because you've got lots of phones and tablets and laptops and iPads and all kinds of devices in your home that are you want to back up to rather than using you know Dropbox or Google Drive or any kind of third party cloud. So periodically all of these devices will back up onto that NAS. Now that is a great thing until one or all of those devices suddenly go, oh, I need a bit of space, I'll just delete some stuff and make some room. It's no longer a backup that NAS now because it only has the only copy of those files. So it's very important to make sure if you're going to use the NAS in that fashion that you have a backup to connect to it. And one of the most cost effective and affordable ways to do it in the long run is a USB drive attaching a large USB storage array be it an external one or a big power brick with bigger drives to the NAS and there, and there setting up the NAS in a way that it can send data periodically on a schedule or as soon as the USB is connected to the NAS and that can be incredibly useful. You don't have to back up the whole NAS, you can set it up to be just individual files and folders if you so choose, but it means that that area can be backed up onto a USB that you can carry away with you. A lot of the things we're going to talk about today work both ways. With the USB drives you can actually have a system where if you use a USB external drive like a Lacey or something and you're a, photo, a video editor perhaps you can get back from a shoot connect it and it will automatically draw the contents of that USB onto the NAS. You can even do a diff backup too. So let's talk about USB backups on a NAS. Let's go. Okay, so here we are back on the desktop interface of our DS1019 Plus. Real quickly, as we're on here, what your first thing you need to do for your USB backups, and again, I can't stress enough just how useful this is, go to the package center and then download an application for free just called USB Copy. It's incredibly intuitive. Now, as mentioned in the intro there and at the splash screen, this gives you the ability to either back up the contents of the NAS to a USB or probably more practically for a number of you, particularly photo video editors, the ability to back up the contents of a regularly used USB drive onto the NAS. Now, there are specific settings for if you're gonna be doing photo and video files, alternatively for basic data of all kinds, your PDFs, your CSVs, any of that sort of stuff, you can go for data import, which is far more file led. Now, if you want to back up from the USB onto the NAS, these are the two options for you and they present incremental backups they present mirrored backups and they present just standard versioning backups something that we can go through throughout the course of the video alternatively you can of course back up from the nas to the usb i'm going to focus primarily on this one today just because i think usb copy at its source is far far more useful as an alternative means to back up your nas repeatedly onto an external drive, whether it's the whole device or just a select um, bunch of files. So if we go to the data export option and click next, we can then choose the name of our task. So in the case of this, we're going to call this NAS to USB. I'm going to type then, remember the video software we're using right now is using a lot of GPU on this PC, so I apologize for any delays. Uh, from the source we have to select the source folder so for now let's go for some photos let's back up one of these albums i've got here on the nas and back those photos up actually let's go for the whole album onto the usb so that's our two albums full of photos there and we're going to click next from here we select the destination and it will automatically look for usb devices so if you go to the usb drive here there's nothing on this usb it's a 16 gig USB drive and this will work with large USB drives and small USB 2 and 3 So click click select and next we can go to the versioning of the uh, copy mode now Multi versioning means every time you run a backup It will create a separate directory on that USB drive of all the files in case you've made differences And in case there's errors or maybe some of those files might be corrupt So every time you run the backup task it will create a fresh folder Next, mirroring. It will create a complete identical copy on the USB of the file structure, the source on the NAS. So if you delete files from this folder, 
it will delete them on the destination USB. These two will be identical, which is good for space considerations, but I think bad in every other way. Um, and finally, you've got incremental, probably the most popular of all. And what this is, is if every time you run the backup, we'll only create one folder of all the backup files. However, every time you delete files from the NAS, it will still keep the files on the USB. And during the backup procedure to keep it quick, it will only back up files that are changed or different. So if you've got a directory of photos where you add, say, 100 photos a day, in this incremental backup system, it will only back up the changes each time. It will still keep all the original files, but to make the backup procedure a lot quicker, it will only back up the changes each time. That is known as an incremental backup or a diff backup, depending on your position. Now, there are different settings on an incremental backup, as you can see here, which will change modifications and what it chooses as an incremental backup, be it on name, size, or extension. So these are things you can say about deletion of other files or deletion of old files. If it finds two files that are very, very similar, what does it do? So for now, let's go for a mirrored backup because an incremental backup might differ for a number of you out there and a multi-versioning backup will create multiple folders. So for now, let's go for a mirror. So we'll click next. Next, we have to say what the procedure is for our backups. So for example, you can have it so that if you connect a USB device, it will automatically run the backup. So again, this is more designed for the other direction. This is designed for people who want a regular system of backups on their external drive or have an external drive they take for photography shoots or for business, maybe for college, for school, whatever, where they get back, connect the USB, and don't want to go to the palaver of the user interface. They just want to connect the USB and for the NAS to trigger, as it says there, the backup procedure, and then eject it safely if they so choose. So there'll be a light on the USB that will go out to say that the USB has now been safely disconnected. So for now, let's set it up that the backup procedure will happen every time the USB device is connected. Now you can run a schedule if you so choose, and this means that you leave the USB device connected or have it connected at this time, and the NAS will automatically run this backup procedure. So for now, what we'll do is we'll click next going forward. We won't enable a schedule, but we'll set it up so this device will back up to that USB every time the USB is connected. Next, you can say the kind of files you want to back up, because sometimes if you're backing up a whole directory, be it the whole NAS or select folders, some files you're not going to care about, whether they're too small, too big, or irrelevant. For now, we're going to back up all files in that directory. Or you can create custom filters for different extension. For those that aren't aware, an extension is just what appears after the dot, and it represents the type of file. So we'll click Apply, and now, our backup task is created and you can alter the settings that we just went through right here or create a brand new system of backup for now well let's run this backup and this will run it in the background you may have heard the beep there in the background and now it's initiating this backup and i'm going to fast forward to when the backup is complete and now the usb has dismounted the usb after the backup was completed. So now I can safely, as you can see at the top right, safely disconnect our USB drive. So I've disconnected it, I've got it here in my hand and what I'm gonna do is let's say for example, I've just used it, but taken a bunch of photos or whatever, uploaded them to the NAS. Actually, why say it, let's do it. Let's add some files to that directory and then reconnect our USB drive. So there's the folder in question. And what we'll do is we'll find, we'll get a random photo from my local uh, device here. And we'll have a look. Let's go for some sort of sample, maybe something that Windows chucks together for us. There we go. There's some of our files from the previous videos. Let's grab these random pictures. Let's rename them to something else. Test space. All three of those files and we're going to upload those three files into the directory it will add these three files for us 
And now we've got these three extra files in that directory for us. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the USB because we don't need to leave this open. This should be running in the background at all times. And I'm going to reconnect our USB drive like so. The lights are on. Let's have a look. Let's see what happens. Come on, NAS, don't let me down. Let's have a look. It's going to initialize. There's been a beep. That's the previous task completed. And now the back, the uploading is happening. And, it, and now it's doing the upload of those three files that we sent earlier on. And the beep is now initiating for the backup. Have a look there. We'll make our way into the NAS. Those were three pretty small files, truth be told. So chances are it's been an incredibly quick backup. Make our way in. And now it's completed that secondary task. Because remember, these were only three small files. And now it's disconnected it to make sure that we can't alter this drive at all. And there you go. That is as simple as it is. It really is an incredibly straightforward procedure to have these backups to the USB. Of course, if we used other backup methods, maybe we would have been able to see the drive on screen. But it's that straightforward to use the USB copy facility on your NAS and back up these files as regularly as possible. This has been USB copy on the DS1019 Plus, one of the many ways in which you can back up. And in a later video, we are of course going to be talking about cloud backups with third party companies such as Dropbox and Google Drive. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.